Welcome to a new episode of EasyPowerWall.com. After building the rack, it's time to get the batteries out of the box. In this episode, we will check the batteries, read the QR code, and then prepare them for installation on our shelf. Follow me on this journey. Here we have our nuts, screws, inner screws, bus bars, all included. You see the box is very well protected. Normally it's glued, but I already opened the box just to test the cells. And here we have our four cells in the box. You can see everywhere we have a positive and negative terminal. Black is positive, gray is a negative terminal. And here we have the QR code. Next step in the process is check this QR code. Then we can see where and when it's produced and by who. Afterwards, we will prepare these cells, inserting the inner screw and so on and so on. First up first, checking the QR code. To scan the QR code of a battery, I have an application called LifePo QR Battery QR Scanner. You find it on the left bottom. You press the QR code on the screen. And then you're invited to go over the QR code to see if it brings any results. You have it already here. It's EV Power, LifePo 4, the famous and well-known LF280K. 6000 cycles battery 280 amp hours so equal to 900 watt hours so this is cell number one let's check cell number two so same cell i think the same production date as well production date says 6 december 2021 now it's early 23 so they're over a one year old but I acquired these cells at least six months ago and they have been on the boat for at least two months. So it is, these are recently made uh, batteries, never been used. So they should uh, work fine in the power wall. So always a good idea to, uh, to verify and scan your cells before you put them uh, into service. These basin cells are extremely well packed. These are 16 cells, 16 by 5 is 80 kilograms. So make sure your table, your workbench is strong enough to hold these cells. That's very important, first of all. Let's take the um, inner screws. They look like this. The nearly flat side goes into the post. The inner screw for the positive and the negative side is the same. So we just hand tighten them and later on we will apply the correct torsion. 3.8 or uh, 4 newton meter. So the surface is really smooth. I'm not gonna polish the studs or so. Everything is uh, properly welded. No need to Put some extra grease or so.
all inner screws are set. Check. I will do a quick check if the voltage is still around 3.3 .3 volt. Yeah, they're all around 3.27, 3.28, 3.28. Now I'll introduce a new tool, that's our uh, torque wrench, we can set it between I think 2 or 50 uh, newton meter. As I said before we will put uh, 3.8 or maybe 4 and so we will put some tension on the inner screw and all tensions will be the same over all cells in the pack. So it's very important not to over tighten these screws or the post will become loose, will have a bad contact, will become warm. So we have to avoid it at all costs. It's, they are very reasonably priced. I think they're around uh, 40 euro, 40 US dollars. So I think it's a very good investment if you build a power wall. It's this size of screw you need to tension the inner screws. Number 20. So how does it work? You switch on the unit, of course you have to insert two, uh, I think it's triple A batteries. Switch on the device. It does some kind of tracing or resetting. And then you enter the number of Newton meter you want to apply. Let's say I'm gonna start with 3.8. Just do it gently. If you hear a beep, go slower. If you hear a steady beep, you're at the right amount of torsion. If for some reason it's stuck in the end screw, don't worry. Just use the pants, wiggle it gently and it will easily come loose. I had it once with one of the previous inner screws. Be very careful if you use power tools that you don't make a, a short. All cells have the screws at the right tension, so we can already start moving them towards the shelf. But before installing them on the shelf, I want to put some isolation between the cells. Famous EVA tape. So I found this on, uh, on the internet and I will use the same. So I will make some room. Let's unpack the EVA tape. I think this order is like two times five meters. This was the best deal I could find on AliExpress. The link is available in the description. It's the right height, but I think I will cut one centimeter because if if it's not correctly stick to the cell, it might come above the cell, and this won't be very would be very neat. So I will remove one centimeter, and the width of the cell is like uh, 17, and I will cut it on on 15.5 or so.
Oop, that's dangerous. The distance is not critical, so don't worry if it's at 1 or 1.1 or 0 0.9. I'm a bit surprised. They have uh, cut the length on uh, per 1 meter. So. It almost covers the whole cell. Yeah, I'm happy with this result. What do you think? So let's delegate this job. I will ask the boss lady to cut it at 14.5 centimeter. So this is the plastic rail we cut before at the right length. And it's just important, it's on the same distance. So now the goal is to push the cells against the cable tray, the spacer, like I call them. And then I can use the standard bus bar to connect the cells. Now let's get some EVA tape and I'll take my computer. I made a design how I have to populate the, the cells with the polarity. So I connect them in two packs of 48 volts. So I have one pack at the left, one pack at the right. So I made a PowerPoint slide. Of course, it will be available in the description of this film. This is how I will populate the cells into the lower shelf. I have here the most positive connection, here the negative ground. And then I make my connections through all cells. And on the other side, the opposite way, the most positive cell will be here, most negative for the ground will be here. You see this uh, separation bar, it's just uh, for information, but I will not put anything in between. 
I will only use the EVA foam between all cells. The first eight cells are sitting on the shelf. From this side on, the second battery start, and I have to start again with a plus on this side. And then alternate plus, plus minus, plus minus, till the end. As you can see, the EVA tape doesn't cover the whole cell. I have an edge of one centimeter at every side and maybe half a centimeter from top and bottom. Yes, life is good. Three point eight Newton meter. That was another great evening at the office. This is how uh, close to 30 kilowatt hours looks like. Pretty amazing, isn't it?
just check and double check you don't leave any nuts or screws or bolts so the next step is to add a heat shrink tube on every bus bar it will prevent the shorts in the near future let's hope we never face uh, that issue but it's a uh, for sure a safety improvement for the power wall the, the diameter the diameter of the shrinking tube is 18 but of course there will be a link in the description of the video where i ordered uh, my shrink tube So to speed up things, you can do five at once. So the first stack of bus bars is ready. On the left side, I have all bus bars connected. So if I measure the voltage right now, I will have a 48 volt. Of course, they're not tightened yet. So maybe have some loose contacts. But once the BMS leads are installed in the, uh, the small cable gutter, and we have all tightened to the right spec, we will have the 48 volt here on the terminal. I'll do the same for the other side. This is the most negative, most positive. All bus bars are in place. One thing we have to do before connecting the BMS leads is checking the tension we have here on the cells towards the end of the frame. I initially planned to put a 10 Newton meter on the screws, but uh, maybe that's a bit too much. So I will see what's the status right now and then make sure we have the same tension on all four screws of each pack. So I'm setting the uh, tension on 2.5 Newton meter. I tried it also on the other side, but it was very challenging to get it actually right. Because once you put tension on the one screw, the other one came loose. So it's very difficult to, um, yeah, to find the right uh, spot. So I'll just set it to 2.5, but I'm not really sure if it's the right tension or so, but at least it's secured for me it's uh, the best solution
to see. Now this one is loose again, you can just hand tighten them. So really very challenging. And now try the opposite side, but you see now this one is loose. And remember, when we just installed the, 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 the batteries, they were almost pushing against this side. So I already moved the batteries like two centimeters. Now you see this one is loose again. You move the batteries like two centimeters. But the gaps are equally distributed over the cell, so yeah. Now this job is done, we can finally start with the BMS leads. We have the batteries installed. Let's keep the BMS video for the next one. 27 minutes, maybe a bit too long. Let me know in the comments. If so, I'll make some shorter clips. Thanks for watching and see you soon for the next episode of EasyPowerWall.com.